the final salesman sample. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey, it's George the Antique Nomad again, and I came out to the van because I'm finding stuff here at Madeline's, and I need to give them my tax ID number, and it was in the van, so I'm contemplating what I can fit because I see some other things that are really cool. Let's go back in and do some more shopping. The ship's wheel is a different style of the golden hour clock, called the golden helm clock by Jefferson, and it's done in a way where the gears follow and turn so that it doesn't appear that there's anything making it happen. This one's priced at 150 and that is retail. Speedball was a very popular lettering set for advertising, calligraphy, that sort of thing, drawing. This would have been the store display with all the different nibs. It's priced at 175 It does seem to have a lot of the original contents. I'm a big fan of lilies, and Roseville's Zephyr Lily pattern is one that I really enjoy for that reason. Unfortunate about the deflection. These prices are all priced between about a hundred and a hundred and a quarter, but they are some of the better patterns and colors. Bunch of old beer patches from people's uniforms. Weedemann, that is ten dollars. Lifesaver, YMCA, eight dollars. Fall City Beer, yeah, that's about what I get for mine. Scotch Snuff, looks like a trade card. You're gonna see these out there. This is the 150th anniversary of what started as the b &O Railroad, the first railroad in the country, to link Baltimore to the Ohio River. There it says Chessie System, so this is 1977, and it's got the information on the back. Priced at 48 If you were in Japan, Christmas is the day that you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and you get a special Christmas bucket. It's a little different than what we have here in the States, but Kentucky Fried Chicken has become synonymous with Christmas in Japan. The power of marketing. Peanut butter tin is priced at 45. It's got some wear and it's a fairly plain one, but peanut butter tins pretty much start at $45 retail these days. Float with Coke. Coke with ice cream. These look like they're repops. They have some fun ephemera in here, but you just have to look closely to see what's older and what's newer. Pocket Full of Fun was a cartridge. It was sort of like a Viewmaster, essentially slides, but it had 100 frames of pictures, so they figured people would like it better. It didn't really catch on somehow, though. Pure 13 appears to be some sort of a comic romp with a lot of people I've never heard of, from Fox. This is a neat sign from an insurance company because of the graphic. Framed and done a lot like a tray that should be 1920s vintage, priced at 100 I like the comic cards of the 40s and 50s. Sometimes they're corny. We're only slumming. <laughs> I love it. And sometimes they're just sweet. These are linen era. They're mostly from about 1950. They're priced at a dollar a piece, which is perfectly good for a collector. And if it was a little less, I'd buy a bunch of these as a dealer because I think they're cute. Real photo cards and even chromoliths with giant fish or giant trees or things that are done not to scale are pretty collectible too. Sort of legal. It's always so hard to tell with eBay. My jarts 
listing got taken down, even though I listed it the same way that 30 people who sold them at the same time did. You know, it happens. But these old cigarette packages do have value. Now, I mostly sell them at shows, but they can be anywhere from about 10 to $30 a piece, depending, and that's why they have 150 on the whole display. Pencil boxes are collectible. Sometimes they're tin, sometimes they're Victorian with lithography. This one's cool because it's the latest type, and the latest type is a Ford Trimotor airplane from about 1930, as opposed to on the back they show the Wright Brothers airplane of 1903. Air travel really expanded in the 20s and 30s. Air mail started everywhere. This is pretty cool. It's $20. I suspect that's about the right price for this one. Now this is fun. 7-Up Your Thirst Away Flash Headlights for Service. So this is at some sort of a drive-in or drive-up restaurant. And number eight is next. $12 on that. That's kind of interesting. And this one, it's unfortunately a little damaged. But it's blink lights for service from about 1950. Same concept again, that's number six. Here's the pedestal for a Roseville apple blossom jardiner. I wonder if they have a price on that. It's probably easier to find a bowl than the pedestal, and it's only $65. And I know it might be a little bit of a wait to sell it without, but I have a feeling because it's only marked USA that they don't really realize what it is. So I think that might go with me. Again, you look for the thing that doesn't belong. Everything else in here is advertising. It's kitchen stuff. It's Western photographs. It's toys. And even rat troll. A lovely rat trap. So the Roseville piece seems especially sitting under a bunch of boxing magazines like something that's just been forgotten okay well i got it out i still think it's a screaming deal but it does have crazing and the crazing is darkened in a way that is pretty noticeable so i think what i'll do is file away the idea that this is here and if i see a good price on the bowl then i might come back and get this presidents of the united states george washington abraham lincoln Ulysses S. Grant and William McKinley are featured prominently, so this is going to date to about 1900. This is a neat piece here. This is from an old ski shop display. But she feels like she's plastic, so she's not as old as I'd like her to be, and especially because they're asking 300. Old advertising paperweights. The shoes are more common. This one with the big lathe would have been worth a bit of money. It actually has a 1914 copyright date. However, it's damaged. Unfortunate. Sunbeam bread. The little pencil sharpener is three bucks. That'll be a fun thing to just throw in one of my little small cases. Looks like they've got a bunch of little premiums from Sunbeam. But really, it's the Sunbeam girl that people want. And the thing that I think is the most interesting with her is the profit calculator. This would have been for someone to use in the field. This one is $8, which I think is probably about appropriate. And the ultimate, in fact, the final salesman sample. $350. They do have some good lunch boxes. Star Wars, He Man, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound. Astronauts are always good because they're astronauts, and of course, James Bond. The old Laugh In Show, Return of the Jedi, Mickey Mouse Club. This was a very popular one, and it's time the Chuck Wagon. You saw a lot more of those than you saw of the Buccaneer. Nice selection of radios here. $80 on the RCA Victor is not a terrible price. The Zephyr is likely to be a Japanese-made radio from about 1960. There's a California pottery that made a lot of these hillbilly pieces around 1950. The bowl is not seen so often. It didn't have a lid, you can tell just see his feet there. 
usually see the drinkware mugs and such and salt and pepper shakers. Even though she would have had people to do that for her, Martha Washington somehow became synonymous with sewing. So there's sewing cabinets that are called Martha Washington cabinets, and this is the utility cradle. This is 1932, the 200th anniversary of George Washington's birth. Some tobacco-related items here, and I'm going to look at table lighters and see if there's anything that's reasonable. Bronson was smart. He invented pocket lighters, then he started making all these table lighters in the 50s. He really extended the product. This is a Vera Flame. $30 is not bad, and it's the Nordic design. It was to look a lot like Georg Jensen's Argo pattern. $45 for the cool display is about right. You see those around. Ah, Tampa's biggest five cent cigar. Since Tampa was Cigar City back in the old days, I always look for stuff that says Tampa, but at $18, that label set is more than I can pay. And then this is neat here. Two books of matches for one cent. Matchbooks had advertising on them because it was a way to get people to take matchbooks. People did not want to pay for them when they first came out. So this is unusual because you could get them for free most places. But if you just happen to need book matches right where you were going, well, here you are. And this is priced at 165 Junior typewriter is one of the more common 1950s metal toys. That one's priced at 85 Here's something interesting. This Minton piece is 19th century. Minton is very good English china. And it has staple repairs. That's what the holes are from. Originally there were metal staples. You can see the remainder of those. At some point, somebody removed them and the adhesive held them together. But it's an interesting thing to see. And that's why sometimes people actually keep cracked and broken dishes because the repairs are interesting. They're different from how we do things now, obviously. Here's a piece of cranberry glass I'd like to show because it has a mark, it says, and yes, it does. The mark is a P for pilgrim glass in an arch. We actually convinced pilgrim glass for a while in the early 90s to mark their pieces with that mark because before then they were just using a paper label and we realized that they were not benefiting from the interest in the collector market in their glass in the same way Fenton was, and our conclusion was it was because a lot of their pieces weren't marked and the labels were gone so people didn't know. We made a big business at the time in selling old Fenton, and then there was a store that sold new Fenton at the time and did very well because the collectors who liked the old would buy some of the new pieces if they were nice. So that's why we convinced Pilgrim when we had the factory outlet store for them that they should start marking their wares. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live. That's live with an exclamation point where we're doing additional content of a live nature. Hall sales, bonus stuff, we'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on the Antique Nomad and also on the Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. This is a nice Roseville Dutch set. Yes, the same Roseville pottery that makes the floral wear from about 1910. This is also that era. This is Weller. Now this dealer is doing something that drives me nuts. Your prices are fine, but don't put rare on everything. This is not a rare piece. It's not even a particularly scarce piece. Just because you haven't seen it before does not mean that other people haven't seen it before. We all learned that lesson the hard way when eBay came out. Things that we thought were really rare turned out to only be rare to us because they were all distributed in some other part of the world or the country, and suddenly they were available everywhere. So please. Rare means there's a small handful of them in existence. Scarce is a good word to use if something really is scarce for its type. 
Otherwise, just let the piece represent itself. Around 1980, if you went to a McDonald's and you had your kid with you and they needed a high chair, this is what they got. It's rather modern looking. This one stayed outside somewhere and got a little rust on some of the wheels, but fortunately, the other pieces are good. And these are really hard to find now. Most of them got thrown away because what are you going to do with this when they change the style? Priced at 175 You've got all those familiar characters. Ronald McDonald and Grimace and, well, you see the whole assemblage on here. This has condition problems, but it's such a great piece I wanted to show you anyway. It's made of celluloid, so it has the look of ivory, but it's not. Celluloid is a very early plastic. It is dated 1887 on the back. On the back you can see it's called Triplicate Bamboo and it's by Weederer. This is an American company that got a patent on this in the 1880s. For its age it's a wonderful piece. If it didn't have the damage here, I would be tempted to make an offer, even though it's already priced at $199, because they are very popular. You can see the interior is in a little better condition, and it has a Japanese look to it, because, again, we're getting all excited about trade with Japan in the 1880s. And when you open it up, this is the triplicate. It is a triple mirror. People really like triple mirrors. You can see my legs in 3D. These are very collectible. I feel a little nervous about the way it's hanging on the wall, but that's how they had it, so I'm going to leave it. And it's a very special piece, and if it was in better shape, I think it could be worth double the price. A couple more Capo de Monte lamps of later 20th century origin. And yes, even your kitchen canisters can glow under a black light. A lot of black memorabilia in this case. Brayton Laguna did the Mammy cookie jar in the back, and that is a hard one to find. They were out of California in the Laguna Beach pottery colonies. Abingdon did a Mammy cookie jar. Most of the big companies did. Nowadays you look at it and think, oh dear, but at the time it was just considered a cute variety to do, and of course the customer buying that was probably not a black person. Nowadays, it probably is. Neat store display. A couple of tramp art lamps up here priced at 185 which is really not too bad. The tramp art is First World War, and I would say they were converted into lamps sometime around the Second World War. Persian medallion is another fairly common, fairly popular Fenton pattern. There's three fruits, and that is Northwood again. Dugan made the cherries, that was one of their most popular patterns. That's imperial glass with the shell and sand. The sand is the stippling in the bottom. These were not made to be given out at carnivals. That just became their fate when they started to go out of style and companies sold box lots to carnivals as prizes. But for most of their history, they were considered premium products. Dixie Queen is priced about $50. She's very cute. It's the lunchbox style from about 1910. She's just so cute that she was a pretty common one. Great West is priced at 70 because it's actually a little harder to find. Straw holders were a fun thing that became popular in glass as early as the 20s, and then by the 50s you have this version. This is Japanese made. It's an inexpensive plastic, and I love the big swirlies, and I think I might get that. It's just something you don't see very often anymore. And it says Japan. This weather forecaster is from the Second World War, and you can see that it's either fair or stormy, but either way you have a glass of Calvert with you. And it talks about why you need to have this in your store or on your back bar. If you keep it on a level surface it'll actually work, it says. And war work, the second year, so this is 1943 really because our involvement in the war started at the end of 1941. 
she's gathering things for the rubber drive. When I talked about the scrap drives, that was a constant thing, so that's why a lot of metal things are gone now. And then these U.S. Army glasses from the 1950s and 60s are priced at 65 and 75 for a set, which is about 10 to 15 apiece. Seems about right. Second World War P-38 fighter plane in the original box. An original Crossley radio with the foreign broadcast, so shortwave, priced at 90. For having shortwave, that's actually a pretty good deal. That's going to date to right around 1940 or a little earlier. The Many Faces of Cinderella. We have a later Disney here. That's going to say Made in China. We have a 60s era. I believe this one was done as a cake topper. There was also her shoe that you could get a watch included. And then this looks like it's an older ceramic one, maybe from the 1950s. That is by Leeds China, and it is dated 1950 right on it. And then there's the old book of Cinderella. And this is going to date back probably to the 1920s. Cinderella, of course, is a much older story than the Disney movie. Another war era advertisement is this one. Start your breakfast with America first, last, and always, and buy war bonds and stamps. This is from Midwest Dairy. This one is a reproduction, though. It feels greasy like new glass. It doesn't have any wear. These would have been delivered door to door and washed and refilled many times. So those are clues, and you want to look out for that because this one does have value if it is a real one. This is rather interesting. Shame that it's missing its pens and it needs some cleaning. But this is 80th anniversary of the Pony Express in 1940. And this is done for the postmaster at the time, John R. Steele on the right-hand side there, FDR on the left-hand side. So this would have been done in all likelihood for the benefit of a local post office. Unfortunately, the pens you could replace, but this is broken. That's why it's been marked down to $89. If I was going to a show where I knew I was going to see the fellows who did the political shows, I might be tempted to get it anyway. The old Timex display is 145. I love the old Timex displays. Fun to use at shows and they're lightweight to carry, which is nice. There is a big fancy Budweiser overpool table lamp for 425. It's not going to be super old because it's got the more recent script for them. I like these wall mirrors with the shelving. I will be curious to see if this is for sale because it's got a pretty good look there. They can be a little clunky, and this one maybe is, but it's definitely got a 50s modern look to it. A little bit of modern era stuff. They've got the treasure craft tray. It doesn't have the center insert that sat on it, but it's nice. This is Mark Blanco question mark. It's actually rainbow glass again. When you see this long minaret, it seems like it's usually theirs. But the thing that's a great deal, I know it's just gold, but this is Murano glass, and look at the size. This is a nice big piece of Murano for $29. I'm looking to see if I can find any sort of an F signature, and I do see something right on the edge. It's so faint, I will have to take a jeweler's loop to it to see. But if it turns out that it's Barovia or one of the bigger companies, it could be worth quite a bit. In any event, I believe it's worth double or more of what's priced there, so I'm going to get it. Well, apparently the Three Bears thought Goldilocks was delicious because she's not anywhere to be found. Neat old cash register from about 1960. I remember when they were still using these in a lot of stores. Liberty Root Beer. This is a really cool root beer keg. Just a great look with the metal banding. It is original from about the 1920s. Post office box drawers. Very popular, very collectible now. This set is priced at $6.95. People are using them just like they're using other little drawers. Here's an old Edison recording machine from the early 1900s. Notice that it's metal and it's got the double piece here so you could have the cylinder on one and record to the other. Or you can actually pipe in your own voice and record. So it's called an Edifone because it's a lot like a Dictaphone. 
telephone the Edifone in your city. And they're guaranteed against defects for one year, which is a pretty big deal. Most things did not have a warranty back then. Thomas Edison was very sure of what he was doing. And this is a neat antique ship compass. We see a ton of reproductions of these. Well, here's an original. Priced at $5.25. There's the compass inside. Now, it might have been hard to see, and because of that, they have this little box for kerosene lantern light or other light to come in. So you could put your light source in there, and then you could see to sail the ship at night. Jaeger Watch Company, New York. I'm not sure which car that would have been put in, but it is a car clock aftermarket. Old car hubcaps. These are kind of neat from the old, old cars. Oakland, which turned into Pontiac. DE is DeSoto. I like the post box. A lot of these are Griswold. I'm not sure whether this one is. It's not marked as such, but that doesn't mean it might not be still. Now this store has a lot of really cool stuff. A few things I could buy, and a lot of things that are really fun to see. These are 1950s era glass telephone box inserts. They're priced at 48 each. I was getting that for my 1970s version one, so I think that's a good price. Again, I don't know if it's cheap enough for me to make money on, but it's definitely an interesting piece. Shoelace display, $82. People just love anything with little drawers now. Dr. Pepper from 1981. You can see the sort of funky style. Hey, Madeline's has been really a delight. I've had a lot of fun here. I found some cool things. There's definitely interesting stuff to see, and I'm sure I'll stop by on the way through here again later, because I get the feeling that they get dealers in pretty frequently with new merchandise. So, in the meantime, I look a little bit draggled. It's way past time for me to be getting on the road and getting home and getting some rest. He's tired too. So, I'm George the Antique Nomad. I'll see you here again at the social media you see listed below. Bye for now. Have fun out there. I hope you find something good. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!